moi. Qu'est-ce que je suis dans cette histoire La ronde. L'auteur Le compère Un passant Je suis vous. Enfin, je suis n'importe quel d'entre vous. Je suis l'incarnation de votre désir. De votre désir de tout connaître. Les hommes ne connaissent jamais une partie de la réalité. Et pourquoi Parce qu'ils ne voient qu'un seul aspect des choses. Moi, je les vois tous. Parce que je vois. Et cela me permet d'être partout à la fois. Partout. Tout, tout, mes personnages, la terre retourne jour et nuit. L'eau de pluie se change en nuage et les nuages retombent. Femme honnête. What feeds our desire to know everything? Perhaps it is a drive to see ourselves from the outside. Max Ophuls is recognized as one of the most virtuous filmmakers to have lived. Although plagued by outside forces, his films display a control over filmmaking that few can come close to imitating. Because of his depth adaptation of personal themes and his personal touch in the narratives of his films, he was considered a great auteur by the French writers of the Cahiers du Cinéma. However, since the glory days of the French New Wave, auteur theory has endured justified critique by Roland Barthes and others. Jean-Louis Baudry said that to think there is a living being speaking to you in the cinema is a misrecognition of the technological apparatus that reproduces the work. Since the work stands on its own, There can be no author present when it is distributed, but only a recreation of one, traces of human beings. Nonetheless, the use of auteur theory in the study of film pointed towards the presence of an artistic vision, which could be read in the style and themes of their films, and as such it was a useful framework with which to analyze bodies of work of certain auteurs. Max Ophel's filmic style reflects a desire to transcend history in order to make sense of the present. As such, positioning himself and the audience as transcendental subjects who can see a history in its multifaceted nature. Some uh, indications of this theme are the authorial surrogate as masters of ceremonies he included in the narrative, even though these authorial surrogates were never part of the source material which he adapted to film. Another one is Ophuls' insistence on historical settings, and finally the camera work, which has as its effect the setting up of a what Daniel Morgan calls the dual attunement structure. According to Jean-Louis Baudry, the usage of a centered perspective in film makes sure that the audience takes on a subject position and that the camera com becomes a substitute for, the, uh, for their eye. Baudry thinks that the camera has a transcendental effect making the audience simultaneously present as well as distant from the spectacle. In other words, that the audience takes on the position of a voyeur, an onlooker who is not actually present in the scene, but merely watches it unfold as it should. Max Ophel's camera movements create what Daniel Morgan calls a du dual attunement structure. He describes this as a technique with which Ophel simultaneously expresses the states of mind of a character and the social world which they inhabit, As such, the ethical content of the film is expressed through this camera movement. He defines it as a structure that enables Ophel's camera to articulate the nature of the moral claims and demands that the characters make, but which are missed or denied by the world they inhabit. If the audience identifies with this camera, this technique forces us to see Ophel's words, worlds from this perspective as well, following Baudry's interpretation of the camera. Ophel's usage thus ensures the setting up of a subject that transcends the historical position which we have and allows us to see in the round. However, Ophel's films also stress the impossibility of resisting fate, of changing it. Almost all his films are set in a historical period, which emphasizes a position of looking back upon a history which situates the subject. The camera exists at the end point of this history and as such the outcome of the film is determined at the start. 
It ends right where it began, simultaneously pointing towards the mechanical heart of the film as well as towards the cyclical nature of human life seen through the lens of history. This can be seen in Ophel's most respected films, Madame de Letter from an Unknown Woman, Lola Montez and La Ronde. Finally, Max Ophels uses a master of ceremonies in almost all his films, a passive but omniscient onlooker who knows the destiny of the film and has seen the narrative unfold from all sides and before. This master of ceremonies is the physical manifestation of our desire to know everything. All three elements are particular to Ophel's style and inform the themes of his films. La Ronde exemplifies this style. It starts with the master of ceremonies, the machine operator, literally telling us about the history we are about to watch. The machine he operates is a carousel, or the carousel of romantic love. This carousel itself becomes a me metaphor for the circular motion of love. Furthermore, the master of ceremonies directly addresses the audience, claiming he and the audience are the same, becoming a mirror for the audience, making us aware of our central role in constituting the history, but also expressing a desire to know everything, a desire which the character assumes all of us have. Once again, this desire is also reflected in Ophel's camera work. The dual attunement structure provides us with a viewpoint that it simultaneously expresses the subjectivity of the character that it looks upon, as well as giving us a historical viewpoint from which we can see this desire from the outside. This is uh, uh, very visible in the scene where the young boy makes advances towards the maid in La Ronde. As such, the dual attunement structure provides what in La Ronde can be re read as an ironic tone. The impossibility of resisting fate, however, it also points towards a central theme in Ophel's films and melodrama in general, which Alison McKee has described as telling a history through the eyes of invisible subjects. Max Ophel's Laurent displays the multiplicity of her artistic drive. The making of the film reflects upon a desire to show romantic love and lust for the illusion that it is. This illusion can only be understood through the double attunement structure. On the one hand, we need to understand why the characters behave the way in which they do. On the other hand, we need to see their actions in the cyclical context of La Ronde d'Amour. Entities. The centered perspective of the camera ensures that we, the audience, become the subject of this film. And the master of ceremonies makes us aware of our complicity in constituting its meaning. This complicity is described by the ability to see things in the round or as cycles. As such, Laurent simultaneously sets up the transcendental subject as well as revealing the mechanism behind the setting up. Because of the themes in his movies as well as the style with which he addresses these themes, Max Ophels can still be seen as one of the great auteurs of the past. Taking on this historical position and seeing things for the cycle they are reveals an ideological drive behind Max Ophels' films, one which has as its goal to reveal the structures and the multiplicity of views that create the past. As such, he, his revelation of the technological apparatus which produces this film, as well as his uh, direct addressing of the audience, has as an effect that we become aware of the manipulated nature of the film we are watching and of the multiple viewpoints that we can take, allowing us to transcend ourselves. <laughs>